everyone. Um, it's fantastic hearing all of these um, exciting innovations for the advancement of uh, human health. I'm going to talk about the Human Cell Atlas. Uh, and just to put a bit of context into why this work is needed, humans have constantly you know, mapped scientific frontiers in the world that they live in, the universe all the way to the atom, and CERN being one of the amazing organizations that's doing just that. And there are, but there are still the magic and mysteries uh, of the human body that we still do not know. And one of the major milestones in our understanding of the human body was the Human Genome Project, um, you know, more than 20 years ago now, where researchers from across the world uh, funded through public and private initiatives, using cutting edge techniques at that time, which was to sequence the human DNA, provided the first blueprint of the human genome. And that blueprint has really advanced many under so much understanding of our lives and also advanced medicine. And this blueprint encodes our cells, which comes to what exactly are the cells of the human body. And you've heard earlier, we actually don't know how many cell types there are in the human body. There are 37 trillion cells. And a specific segment of that blueprint, our genetic blueprint, is activated in each cell that gives it its identity. That is why the eye cells become eye cells and the muscle cells are muscle cells. And the genetic blueprint also accounts for the traits, the functional differences of those cells. So really to understand the human body, the next step is we need to map the human cells. And it's a bit like having a Google map of the human body. And you can see that the views are extremely different from a satellite view, what you would see as the body, to a kind of country or continental view of the organ, uh, a much more sort of regional view, which is the tissue, a component of the organ which is specialized, and also the street level, the cell and its molecular information. And that ability for us to actually map every cell in the human body has really been sparked and accelerated by technology revolution. And there are two approaches to doing this. One is applying um, single cell genomics, whereby you take tissue and then you break the tissue apart into the individual cells, and then you look at the gene expression of those individual cells. And it gives you, uh, and, and the gene expression then gives you the cell identity. So this is like a census, a parts list of what makes up the tissue, what makes up the organ. Another way is to look at the gene expression at very high le resolution at the tissue or even the organ level. And this gives you the information of where the cells are, who their neighbors are, how the cells are communicating. And so this location information, which if you put together with the census information, gives you an extremely unprecedented resolution and insight into how the human body is made and um, established. So this is really the mission of the Human Cell Atlas, uh, to provide a comprehensive map of human cells using cutting edge single cell omics technologies. Why? Really to understand health, what, what maintains health, and what goes, ro goes wrong, and how can we prevent things from going wrong, and how can we treat diseases moving forwards. So it began about 2016. Uh, with the realization that it wasn't going to take one lab, it wasn't going to take a village, it was going to take the entire world. And so this international consortium was launched by Sarah Teichman at the Wellcome Sanger Institute and also Aviv Regev, who was at the Broad Institute then, but now at Genentech. And this was the small group of people who came uh, and, and gathered together, bringing interdisciplinary expertise, clinicians, computer scientists, biologists, engineers, chemists, all saying, how can we bring all of our expertise together to find out what exactly is the human body uh, made of? And here we are now in 2022. It is indeed taking the world to build this. There are more than 2,000 members. And I'll talk a little bit about uh, the framework and how this is um, executed at ground level. Firstly, it's a networking science. So there are kind of um, networks that we've defined uh, for various body areas and also systems. Uh, and this 
networks have coordinators who then work with other researchers and trying to sort of coordinate sharing knowledge, sharing technology expertise, looking at how we can analyze the data in a very kind of a systematic and aligned manner. And all of this is supported by working groups, ethics. We've heard about how different countries may have different ethical regulation, equity. How do we make sure that actually this is going to be an inclusive and representative atlas of the different people in the world? How do we analyze the data so that we can actually make sense of, of you know, uh, real sense uh, of, of all the integrated uh, uh, data sets and also standards and technologies. What are the best cutting edge methods that we should be using right now? So it's a flat and democratic structure, very much decentralized. So it's not where one center is doing all of the data generation or one center doing all of the data analysis. Uh, this is trying to kind of like build expertise, regional groupings, uh, collaborative and inclusive, and as I mentioned, global. So you have the Human Cell Atlas South America, uh, Human Cell Atlas Asia networks. But fundamentally, it's open science. Open science from the perspective of sharing the data very early on, open science in the form of sharing expertise very early on, and open science in terms of what do we want to get out of the data? Because the framework of how you work and the infrastructure that you need is very different when you want to build a skyscraper compared to a garden shed. And the Human Cell Atlas is one that's where you're building a skyscraper. And, and, and as I said, to understand health, prevent and treat disease. And I'll give you one exemplar of how the knowledge that we've gained so far from profiling the cells of the human body has really ad advanced our understanding, primarily during the pandemic. So we know that coronavirus needs to enter the cells to infect the cells. And therefore, it needs to bind to receptors uh, that it can recognize on the cells. And the, the receptor is primarily ACE2. So what you could do as a community, having profiled all of the cells in the human body, is come together, put all of your published and unpublished data together, and particularly led by the Human Cell Atlas Lung Network to ask where are the receptors in the human body and where are the vulnerable sites for infection uh, in this context. So where exactly is ACE2 in healthy tissues? With the Atlas data set, we can look at the expression of ACE2 and, and, and its co-receptors. And what you find is that it is most highly expressed in the nasal cavity, but also in the oral cavity, but also in the conjunctiva and the cornea, not just in the lung. So all of these areas where you may need protection, wearing masks and perhaps eye protection. So where exactly is the Human Cell Atlas now in terms of progress and what will it deliver? So this is um, just the networks together and looking at how many individuals, about 10,000 individuals as of this year, how many uh, tissue samples that have been profiled and how many cells and really coming to a more than 10 billion cells, which is a massive uh, advance since its inception in 2016. And, and the next question will be, uh, what do we actually will provide for, for the world? And what we aim to provide is like a periodic table of cells in the way that you know, the periodic table of uh, different um, molecules had been done in the you know, uh, early century. So, um, and with this, this is going to really be able to tell us how the you know, cells assemble together, the building blocks that make the different tissues, the different organs, and also how we can then use this information, the wealth of data behind it, uh, in a way that will allow many, many researchers, many people around the world to actually gain the most benefit from these data sets in the form of like a web browser, for example, that every, anyone can access. And we've all talked about how we, can, how we need to work together, how we should work together. And sometimes I think the question needs to, to be asked is, why aren't we working together more effectively? And perhaps that's a, a focus area uh, for, for the discussion tomorrow. So I'm going to um, stop here and to thank you for your attention um, and, and hope you'll find out more about the Human Cell Atlas. Thank you, Miss. Thank you.